Hi everybody, uh, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the Seattle area and nautical charts and basically what's free and available uh, in terms of looking at uh, sailing. Uh, so uh, I uh, was a certified U.S. sailing instructor on the East Coast in the Cape Cod, Boston area um, and I would say that uh, Cape Cod is, uh, there's a lot of shallow uh, areas um, in general uh, in the the Seattle area um, there are some shallow areas and um, it's uh, I, I took a ferry um, basically from Bremerton all the way to Seattle and that was a pretty nice little ferry um, I put the car on there for about $16 and then a little bit extra I think for uh, me and my friend uh, on the ferry and it was just a nice little boat ride basically from this place here across the center of Puget Sound so it kind of gave me a starting point to think about uh, what's going on there wasn't a whole lot of boats um, out there because it was winter time I imagine um, but uh, it's kind of sad like there's not a lot of sailing going on as much as maybe the East Coast although this is a great area so I'm trying to think about um, buying a boat in the area um, for uh, around three thousand dollars or so maybe less um, and just sharing it with a few other people, sharing the dock fee because uh, oftentimes boats don't get used very much and just wanted to share it with some other people. So uh, my interest in this was basically to study the entire Puget Sound. So uh, essentially uh, I'm familiar with uh, the Puget Sound um, and uh, not as familiar with all of the uh, nautical charts, but I basically wanted to go into that. So uh, what, uh, what most people use um, is uh, basically these uh, printed nautical charts. Um, and you can actually get quite a number of them. Unfortunately, they, I don't know why the United States doesn't do this, but they, they really only have these maps available for the United States. Um, and you pretty much have to search for them uh, in other countries. Um, but there is a really great website here. Um, and this is just... Uh, this iBoating uh, nautical charts, GPS nautical charts.com. Somehow they have gotten uh, some great maps for all over the world. I checked the Mediterranean as well, and off of the coast of Italy, for instance. Um, but really, this area is so great for sailing, uh, although the water is very cold. So um, I have heard some horror stories of people trying to sail from San Francisco, and there's just a ton of fog along here, and you've got to be very careful because. You basically can't see anything but the fog, uh, and it is uh, quite a number of days to get down to uh, San Francisco. Um, and um, But if you're in the Puget Sound, uh, at least from my personal feeling, it looked pretty good if it warms up in the summertime. Um, there's just a lot of little islands, and particularly up in here, uh, in uh, these islands, uh, there's a lot of little spots. Very, very pretty and nice, but the water is freezing cold. So... Uh, basically what you might want to do is go to this website to start with um, and I just printed out a simple little piece of paper with uh, these nautical charts and uh, I even made a t-shirt with the nautical chart on it but you can see that each one is kind of separate the bigger ones have less detail the smaller ones have more detail and there's PDFs and ECNs now there's another program called uh, it's called what is this here Oof. Yeah, so this is Open CPN, and this works on a bunch of different uh, platforms, and including uh, like iPads and things like that. And you can basically have free nautical charts, but you got to download them and install it, and it's not quite perfectly easy. Um, it is free though, which is great. So um, another great source is this a marine traffic.com, and this gives you basically where all the boats are. Um, so you have to have a uh, little thing on your boat to tell you where uh, they are. And you can see each color coding is a different type of boat. Um, for example, pink is fishing boats. Um, and it is super interesting to look at this. I had to edit this map slightly. You have to edit it with um, <clears throat> satellite view and then check your vessel types. And then you can add layers and different other things. And uh, you can pay for it if you'd like to do even more than what I'm doing here. Um, but uh, but this gives you an idea uh, for where all the boats are and as well as some of the uh, docks and ports. So uh, if I zoom in here on Seattle, um, 
And uh, let me pause this for a second. Uh, so what you can do is you can click on this layers and then you click on marinas um, because basically what we want to know is where um, we can talk <clears throat> and uh, that can be pretty complicated uh, you can add the ports in here but these are probably not what you're looking for these would be like the major ports um, a marina is more of like a small boat type of thing um, so we can look in here and we can even shut off uh, a lot of these so this is pretty helpful um, just to see it's kind of chaotic right now. Let me pause this again. Uh, so under ship types here, I'm just going to disable all the ships so we can look at just the marinas um, as a starting point. So basically for me buying a boat or working with some other people that buy the boat and we would share it, the marinas are kind of a big deal uh, to have that map. Um, and certainly uh, some marinas are maybe way better than others and this is still pretty hard to see where the marinas are but uh, you can see down here a uh, marina and then uh, another marina, marina here uh, marina there and I'm a little bit confused here because it doesn't show <clears throat> for example there's some marinas just uh, along this Elliot uh in this elliot bay okay so here we got the port of seattle um and some others let me pause this for a second so i'm just going to switch this up for a moment so this is the um gps nautical nautical charts iboating web app um and uh it's pretty nice so i would say this is probably the better of the ones that are free uh, looks a little bit chaotic, um, but as you zoom in here, you can start to see some details. So this part is the channel where you have the big boats going through. Um, and basically uh, what I was looking for on this map um, was the uh, areas where you could actually uh, anchor. So if you had a sailboat, you might want to stay there overnight. Um, and you have to zoom in pretty far here. So this is an anchor sign. <clears throat> that means you can anchor there. Um, and actually it just removes those as you zoom out a little bit so it's hard to see so you might want to go over to these nautical charts and let me just zoom in so you can see what's going on here so there's quite a number of charts here um, and like I said uh, if you zoom out this really is a really great area to a sail and boat in it's perhaps the best in the United States I would say except for maybe the Caribbean area so here you can kind of see i'm clicking on this and showing different sections so each one of these maps are numbered and you have to know the number that you want port sounds and so if you're going to sail to a specific area you might want to get the uh, general map like if you were sailing from uh, say seattle to uh, port townsend you'd grab the port townsend map maybe a couple of these smaller ones and then a big one for the north area so i just grab those to kind of show you what this looks like so this is the whole puget sound map and if you hold control and scroll in you can start to see some of the detail on this map um, so it is pretty good and you can see that they even list some of the charts so it's not super accurate here so you may want to either use this eye boating map which can get you some more detail and that shows mud silt and this is kind of an electronic version and then there's this one so this is the just the south this is 18474 so you can see there an anchorage area anchorage area anchorage area but the other one didn't show this anchorage area so i don't know um there are uh certain marine radios that you need to have to dock and you may want to uh contact uh, the shoreline uh, from your radio and make sure that everything is okay on these areas um, so I because I haven't actually uh, docked in some of those places so uh, that was all I really wanted to show is these main maps so basically um, when it comes to the entire Seattle area uh, you want to kind of take a look at these uh, NOAA charts and then possibly this one too is really great so uh, and this can give you an idea um, you know for depths and just about everything in the entire Puget Sound so 
Uh, let me just think of anything else. So I do have a couple other things. There was this document that I found that was pretty helpful. It's just Shoreline Boating Access Seattle Department of Parks and Recreation. And they have this uh, link up here for that. And it just shows basically you could have 15 minutes at any of these public boat launches. And then about two hours right on the shoreline um and there is tides that you got to worry about that you could get stranded uh, if you pull your boat in too close to the tide and all of a sudden the tide goes out um that could be terrible so uh uh but uh they have a quite a big list here of spots i was going to just map this out i might just make that into another video there's just a ton of spots here but um but actually this marina map one is probably a better bet. So if you look at the layers here, and for some reason it has port station. So yeah, so uh, I'm not sure. So it doesn't show some marinas over here. Um, I'm not sure why it doesn't show like, for example, a marina right in here. A lot of boats there. Um, maybe there isn't uh, a way to uh, dock there but most of these have a fee based system in these marinas so I was particularly interested in trying to find uh, you know some kind of uh, good way to kind of you know maybe go between one marina and the other it is quite a long time to sail between these spots here uh, this is about one kilometer so you know this would be one mile or so from here to here so it could be you know five ten miles in a day it could be quite a lot sometimes um and uh this is just the marine traffic map so let's see if we can turn on all vessels here really quick just see what's so this is a live image and you can kind of see um not too many boats you can see the ferries here this is probably the uh only boat out there and then maybe this guy um is out here but uh those are just the larger boats and you can see um something there but usually they show boats as these little tr kind of uh pointy guys um, but we can zoom out a little bit further so you can see it's a pretty quiet day in the seattle puget sound area here we got another boat out here um and uh, some of these can be quite large uh, uh compared to uh uh, because they basically would be going down to the port of Tacoma, which is further south here, so we can look at the entire. So not a whole lot of boats today, and you can see that uh, uh, many of them are probably docked. So let's see the ship types, so you can see the colors here. So these pink ones are pleasure crafts. You got tugboats out there. Air, uh, light blue and then you have passenger vessels which is just the ferries running and um yeah so that this one's pretty helpful i use this all the time the marine traffic just to kind of look at what's going on um and i just started using these ones a little bit more because they're nice to have if you're actually out on the boat um you need to know the depths and things so uh and, you know, I, I'm basically looking for the coolest and best places to uh, sail in the Puget Sound. And uh, there is a couple good spots. Um, it's mostly, right, so there's like Port Townsend um, up on the north here. <clears throat> and then uh, Seattle, of course, uh, down in Tacoma. And then Olympia looked really nice, actually, but it's just so far to get down to Olympia. Just here, there had a nice little uh, boat yard there. Tacoma is really steep hills getting up into the uh, town, but Olympia seems like it was more reasonable. Um, and then there's, of course, uh, uh, there's also a way up here is Bellingham. Um, and I haven't really investigated Bellingham too much, um, but that might be really nice. Um, but Port Townsend was super awesome just for uh, pulling in your boat. There's lots of spots. Um, and then there's also Port Angeles over here. Um, and then up in here is the, uh, there's like a Friday, there's something called Friday Harbor um, on uh, Orcas Island. Um, and then there's also this little Anna Cortez. And then of course, Victoria in Canada. Um, and uh, uh, 
I'm not really sure exactly what would happen if you tried to sail up into Canada. There's probably a separate Coast Guard there. Probably monitor these waters and you gotta be careful about that. Have a passport and these kind of things. Um, but that would be fun experience just going to Victoria, I'm sure. Uh, a lot of people uh, sail from Seattle to Victoria all the time, but um, but honestly, there wasn't a lot of people, so I'm kind of frustrated. The reason I wanted to make this video, uh, you know, is actually because I was frustrated that there's so few people uh, doing sailing out in Seattle area, and uh, you know, I was coming from the East Coast, and uh, even on the East Coast, it's you know, kind of a niche group of people, uh, yacht clubbers. In general, um, as a member of a yacht club, it's pretty fun. Uh, it was a cheap little yacht club, but fun nonetheless. And but you know, in Seattle, there's basically uh, quite a lot of little spaces. So you know, part of the problem is how much sailing you can do in a day. Um, you know, and and that's kind of uh, I would say a good day uh, boat would be from Bremerton to Seattle, and other than that, you're pretty much pushing it. Of course, people could probably do Seattle to. Uh, down to Tacoma in a day, but uh, that would be quite a sale as well. So it's it's basically, um, you know, 20, 20 miles is a kind of a reasonable day, depending on the wind. And also the hills are pretty big, so you kind of want to stay, got to be careful on the wind side, um, probably usually coming in from the west here off the coast, uh, off the ocean. Um, but, uh, um, but yes, there's just a lot of different areas here. Um, and um, let me, so I just turned uh, down the roads a little bit so you can look at uh, more of the landscape here. But uh, certainly, um, certainly it was just totally amazing. Some beauty that I saw up here in these uh, islands. Um, uh, but it's super quiet and, and just, uh, it's really different sailing than the East coast, like on the East coast, uh, you know, there's only just a couple islands out there, uh, you know, in the Boston area and then, uh, pretty much have to get down to Florida, um, and, uh, whatnot, but, uh, uh, but this is a really great spot in general. So you can see there's some airports I have posted. So. Uh, that was one reason why I'm thinking about uh, actually getting a boat up here rather than in Seattle. But I kind of really wanted to just pay a little bit extra and share it with a few people. Portland was just so far from the ocean, and uh, it's really kind of a smaller river there. Um, and you can see, um, let me just get this on the whole map so you can kind of compare what we're looking at. So, uh, you know, the nice part, the difference between sailing up here that I didn't quite realize as a young kid sailing out here in Boston area is yes, it's nice. Um, but, uh, there's really a lot of like fjords, um, and tall mountains, uh, that make it uh, really beautiful to sail, uh, in these areas, kind of a lot like Norway. Um, from what I hear <laughs> when you get up into Alaska, um, but, uh, it of course can be beautiful. I think sailing down here as well and warm. Um, so that's kind of the trade off, but, uh, uh, but then again, that's not really even America, and you got to really be dedicated to sail all the way down here to uh, Caribbean. I think some people do sail. I have a friend down here in Fort Lauderdale, and we might try to sail to, uh, I don't know, some guys say it's a good day sail from uh, Fort Lauderdale over to, or uh, Miami over to uh, the Bahamas, but that's like 60 miles. I, I don't know. They say you can leave in the morning and make it there by night. Um, but, um, you know, that's quite a, quite a bit of sailing, I would say. So, you know, you could do quite a lot in one day, um, of course, but, um, depends on the wind and you can see these, uh, big, this big volcano, Mount Rainier here, um, and whatnot. So let me just switch, let me just switch back to the nautical map. So, uh, see if we can discover any other last details before uh, we get going here. So, in general, um, you know, what I'm going to basically do at this point is once I, uh, you know, before I get out into my, I kind of want to plan out maybe a couple different journeys, uh, figure out like what the distance is that I'm willing to go. Um, it may be there. So you could basically do maybe 40 miles, let's say, in a day if you really wanted to. 
be on a boat pretty much all day. So it is nice to kind of maybe get out and just have a maybe 20 mile journey or something so you can do something at one end or the other. So it is hard because you got to find a point that is fun that you can get out and maybe do some things. So um, so I'm kind of debating what that means. Um, there's a lock in here that you have to watch out for. So um, that takes extra time uh, if you're trying to uh, say sail from uh, uh, one place to another. Um, and uh, I think that might be a lock symbol right there. And I don't have the symbol there, but um, <clears throat> but this is a pretty large lake too. Um, but uh, the wind could be pretty much nothing in this area because there are some pretty tall hills in that area. Uh, but uh, you can see mud. And I have heard some stories about people trying to anchor, get their anchors caught uh, in rocks and stuff. So it's a, maybe a trade-off between sand and mud. Um, and, uh, you know, we can maybe discuss that down the way from here. But, um, but anyway, so... Uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this uh, study of nautical maps in a uh, Seattle area. Uh, and again, I would say take a look at the uh, nautical charts from NOAA uh, for sure. Take a look at this one. Um, and uh, these are basically just the free ones. Um, there are paid ones out there. Um, I have kind of experimented with some of them. Um, but honestly, I just like the free ones, um, and I like uh, what you have to do here. But it's actually nice to kind of print some of these out and do the homework ahead of time. And that's basically what I'm trying to do in order to uh, get out on the water, hopefully, uh, this summer, um, make some more friends, and uh, share a boat. If you're interested, I'd be interested in possibly sharing a boat with you in the Puget Sound. Thanks. Hope uh, let me know if you have any questions. See you.